Free UWorld Questions. Hi guys, this is RN Daily Dose, formerly as Indai RN, and here I am to give you some helpful tips to maximize your study for the exam. And before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. Free UWorld Questions The nurse is caring for a client who is having a thoracentesis. Following the procedure, the nurse monitors for complications. The initial post-procedure monitoring plan should include what? Select all that apply. 1. Level of alertness. 2. Lung sounds. 3. Oxygen saturation. 4. Respiratory pattern. 5. Temperature. 6. Urine output. The nurse is caring for a client who is having a thoracentesis. Following the procedure, the nurse monitors for complications. The initial post-procedure monitoring plan should include what? Select all that apply. Answers. 1. Level of alertness. 2. Lung sounds. 3. Oxygen saturation. 4. Respiratory pattern. Explanation. Thoracentesis is commonly used to treat pleural effusion. The primary healthcare provider HCP will prepare the skin, inject the local anesthetic, and then insert a needle between the ribs into the pleural space where the fluid is located. A complication of thoracentesis is pneumothorax, which occurs when the needle goes into the lung and causes the lung to slowly deflate, like a balloon with a small hole in it. Bleeding is another, yet less common, complication of the procedure. Signs of pneumothorax include increased respiratory rate, increased respiratory effort, respiratory distress, low oxygen saturation, and absent breath sounds on the side where the procedure was done where the lung is collapsed options 3 and 4. Tension pneumothorax may also develop, with tracheal shift to the unaffected side, severe respiratory distress, and cardiovascular compromise options 1 and 2. This may be prevented by early detection of pneumothorax through appropriate monitoring. Option 5 infection would be a later complication occurring a few days after the procedure, so monitoring temperature is not required during the initial post-procedure period. Option 6 Urine output should not be affected by thoracentesis or the drugs administered for this procedure. Educational Objective Following thoracentesis, the nurse should monitor for signs of pneumothorax including respiratory rate, respiratory effort, oxygen saturation, and lung sounds. A parent calls the clinic nurse concerned about a 5-year-old with a nosebleed. The parent says the child had a similar incident one week ago while at school. Which instructions should the nurse provide? Select all that apply. 1. Apply a cold cloth to the bridge of the nose. 2. Apply continuous pressure to the nose for 10 minutes. 3. Have the child lie down and turn to the left side. 4. Keep the child calm and quiet. 5. Take the child to the emergency department. A parent calls the clinic nurse concerned about a 5-year-old with a nosebleed. The parent says the child had a similar incident one week ago while at school. Which instructions should the nurse provide? Select all that apply. Answers. 1. Apply a cold cloth to the bridge of the nose. 2. Apply continuous pressure to the nose for 10 minutes. 4. Keep the child calm and quiet. Explanation, epistaxis, or nosebleed, is rarely serious and is usually due to mucosal irritation from dryness, local injury egg, nose picking, a foreign body, or rhinitis. Most bleeding arises from a highly vascular network on the anterior nasal septum. Epistaxis generally resolves spontaneously or with simple home management. 
The initial step in treatment is to tilt the client's head forward and apply direct, continuous pressure to the nose for 5-10 minutes option 2. Pressure should be applied to the soft, compressible area below the nasal bone eye, the nasal allay. Holding pressure on the nasal bridge does not provide effective relief. Holding a cold cloth or ice pack to the bridge of the nose may also help to induce vasoconstriction. Option 1. Keeping the child quiet and calm may help provide the adequate time and pressure necessary for clotting. Option 4. Epistaxis can often be prevented by avoiding local trauma and maintaining hydration of the mucosa with saline nasal spray or a humidifier. Option 3 A common mistake in epistaxis treatment includes having the client lie down and or or tilt the head back. These positions can cause blood to drain into the mouth and throat, increasing the risk of swallowing or aspirating blood. The client should sit upright and tilt the head forward. Option 5 Epistaxis is rarely an emergent condition and usually responds to home treatment. However, emergency care should be sought if the client has difficulty breathing. Bleeding is excessive and not controlled with multiple attempts with home measures, or the bleeding resulted from an injury that may have caused a nasal fracture. Educational Objective Initial management of epistaxis includes tilting the client's head forward, applying direct, continuous pressure to the nose for 5-10 minutes, and holding a cold cloth to the nasal bridge. Epistaxis can often be prevented by avoiding local trauma and maintaining hydration of the mucosa with saline nasal spray or a humidifier. The nurse is assigned to care for a hospitalized confused client with an indwelling urinary catheter. On entering the client's room, the nurse notes the client pulling at the catheter and grimacing in pain. Blood is trickling from the client's meatus and the urine in the drainage bag is pink. Which action should the nurse take first? 1. Collect a urine specimen and send to the lab. 2. Deflate the balloon on the urinary catheter. 3. Remove the catheter by gently pulling from the urethra. 4. Use a sterile 4 times 4 pad to absorb the blood around the meatus. The nurse is assigned to care for a hospitalized confused client with an indwelling urinary catheter. On entering the client's room, the nurse notes the client pulling at the catheter and grimacing in pain. Blood is trickling from the client's meatus and the urine in the drainage bag is pink. Which action should the nurse take first? Answer. 2. Deflate the balloon on the urinary catheter. Explanation. Because signs of traumatic injury are present, the nurse should follow steps to remove the catheter before further complications such as obstruction occur. Steps for removing an indwelling catheter include the following. Perform hand hygiene, ensure privacy and explain the procedure to the client, apply clean gloves, place a waterproof pad underneath the client. Remove any adhesive tape or device anchoring the catheter. Follow specific manufacturer instructions for balloon deflation. Loosen the syringe plunger and connect the empty syringe hub into the inflation port. Deflate the balloon by allowing water to flow back into the syringe naturally. Removing all 10 milliliters or applicable amount, note the size of the balloon labeled on the balloon port. If water does not flow back naturally, use only gentle aspiration. Remove the catheter gently and slowly. Inspect to make sure it is intact and fragments were not left in the client. If any resistance is met, stop the removal procedure and consult with the urologist for removal. Empty and measure urine before discarding the catheter and drainage bag in the biohazard bin or according to hospital policy. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Option 1 A urine specimen can be collected after the balloon is deflated or after the catheter is removed if needed. Option 4 The meatus should be cleaned after balloon deflation. Educational objective, when the urinary catheter balloon occludes the urethra, it should be deflated immediately to prevent further injury or complication. After balloon deflation, gently and slowly remove the catheter. If there is resistance, notify the urologist.